Hey everybody, it's Connor Onion. This podcast is brought to you by McAllister's Deli in Carbondale, home of some of the best sweet tea in the Midwest and home of genuine hospitality. That's McAllister's Deli in Carbondale, located on East Main Street in Carbondale, across from the mall. Ryan Neal, second year with the Seattle Seahawks. He was a Saluki from 2014 to 2017. They only get one off day a week since they're in training camp right now. And Ryan was very generous with his time, very generous with his one off day. And I'm really excited to share with you the conversation that we have. Ryan is very thoughtful. He was very reflective throughout this conversation on some of the choices that he's had to make to get him to this point in his life and in his professional football career. He's funny, and something that he's picked up from his dad, he's very, very talkative, and that made my job very, very easy throughout the course of this conversation. Here's Ryan Neal. I hope you enjoy. Man, I've been great, man. Thanks for having me. You know, blessed. Still, still doing what I love to do, so... Can't complain. I was checking out your NFL bio today, and this must have slipped past me when you were at SIU. You were born on Christmas Eve? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, yes. That, that is my birthday. <laughs> you're, you're wedging together the best two holidays as a kid all in two days. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of like you – like the Christmas thing is kind of like the main focal point because I come from a big family. Like, it's, what is it, five siblings that I have? But uh, actually, no, four, excuse me. No, it's five, yeah, five of us. And so, you know, when it comes to Christmas, that's a lot of a lot of things that has to be bought and all that. And so it's like, you know, we're just going to kind of push it together and just make it one <laughs> kind of a thing. So it's like you kind of miss out depending on the year. You never know. Some days, you, some years you might just get it all. Some years, yeah. Not so much. It wasn't automatically, <laughs> it wasn't automatically double the presents for you then. No, no, not, not automatically. No, <laughs> uh, no I, I, must, I must have missed that when you were here. But no, I was watching. No. Uh, it, it's pretty cool what the Seahawks do. They, they do that uh, training camp live and, yeah. and, and kind of watch you guys practice. That facility, mm-hmm. man, right there on the lake, that looks gorgeous. Dude, it, it is, man. That, that was probably one of the first things when I first got over here. <laughs> I was uh, eating in our little, well, before we had all the COVID rules. So before all that, in our little uh, dining hall or whatever, and literally it looks over the lake. And so, like, every morning you're just eating, and I'm just like, man, this is this is nice. Like, <laughs> this ain't too bad, man. The facility's beautiful, man. The organization's wonderful. And like you said, man, you be sitting up there in practice, and you just see some eagles just flying. Like, I'm just like, man, this is this is crazy. Like, it's, it's kind of cool, man. It's different, for sure. I love it, though. It's awesome. It almost looks like it has, like, a national park feel. Like, you're in a national park that has a football field in the middle of it. Yeah, literally. That, that's, that's, like, the perfect analogy. It's like you you in the middle of a national park. Like, it's like man, it's just, it's, like I said, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? You see the tall trees, you see the eagles flying, the water. And not to mention the weather is always wonderful up there. I mean, it don't get too hot up there ever. So, it's perfect. <laughs> and, and I'm curious with um, just your position and the organization that you're in, there's so much recent history at that spot in the defensive backfield. The Legion of Boom for so many years mm-hmm. dominated the NFL with Chancellor and Thomas and Richard Sherman. I mean, when you got there, were you kind of not starstruck, but you're kind of like, man, this is this is pretty neat where I'm playing and the position I'm playing. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely um, makes you feel responsible to hold up, you know what I mean, to the history, you know what I'm saying? So you take a lot of pride in it, you know what I mean? Especially what they started in a story that they just wrote, you know what I mean? Creating that, you know, people know them as Legion of Boom, really it stands for love our brother, that's what we go by. And you can see it when they play, you know, you watch the film, it's just nothing but love out there. And it wasn't even just the DBs, like part of them is still there within Bobby Wagner and KJ Wright and now Bruce Servant's back in the mix. And it's just like, to even be around that is still, you know, heavy. It's like, man, that's, you know what I mean? That's that that's them. That is the foundation, you know what I'm saying? So being able to practice with those guys, being in the same locker room with those guys and really picking their brains about the game, is, I mean, that that alone is, is everything for me, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a great thing to be a part of. And like I said, you take a lot of pride in it for sure. You take a lot of pride in it and it makes you proud to be a Seahawk, especially a Seahawk DB, you know what I mean? So I love it, man. I'm just – yeah, it, it was kind of starstruck at first, but now it's like, you know what, let's, let's, let's uphold that name, you know what I mean? So 
that's kind of what it is. I mean, were those the guys you were studying in high school and college? Man, I mean, like you said, Sherm, Earl, Cam, all three of them. I mean, you just – like, it, it's different. When you're watching the game, it's like fans usually watch the game for offensive players. But, like, when you, the Seattle Seahawks came on, you know, Russell Wilson in the offensive side, it's like, man, we want to see that dog on LB. Like, we want to see – like, nobody says that when they turn the TV on. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I can't wait to see what the defense does. It's like – that. So. <laughs> That man, that's what that's what it is, man. It's just like you when I've been watching them since I was in high school or whatever in college, it's like you just love to see them put it together. It's just like that's beautiful, man. It's just beautiful. Like that's football to me. You know what I mean? Besides scoring points, it's like just seeing those guys on the defense just go, like they just go. Like you love it, man. So that's that. Yeah, that's that's what it was for me coming up. What about the speed of the game now that you're up at that level? I'm I'm <laughs> guessing there's a, a a little different gear than playing FCS football. Is that accurate? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. This, I mean, that's just kind of anything. No, you can still come from FBS and go to NFL and realize the game is that much faster. But, heck, yeah, way faster. I mean, way more strategic. You know what I mean? Way more detail. Uh, it, it take a lot more. You know what I mean? Just – it don't just go out town alone. Like, up here, it has to be just as fast as you can move. You know what I mean? Actually, faster than you can move. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to be in position and you got to realize what's going on. And, like, one of my old – like. Actually, one of our OD coordinators from uh, SIE used to say all the time, Coach Paul, he used to say, you know, the devil's in the details. It's the game inside the game. And in the NFL, that's true. You got to know. You know what I mean? Like, because everybody knows. Like, you got to know. Like I said, everybody's here. They can play. You know what I mean? They got the talent to play. But the next step is how far can you go mentally with it? And that's where the speed of the game comes from to me. You know what I'm saying? So that part alone right there is probably the biggest difference, you know, for college and going to the NFL. You mentioned your time in the SIU system. How prepared, based on the coaching you got at SIU, did you feel to to go in and grasp that mental part of playing in the NFL? Yeah, well, you know, um, you know, Coach Paulson, Coach Rogers, uh, Coach Franks, when they were here my, my last two years, um, they really helped me out a lot. You know, especially Coach Rogers who was just studying the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, my whole senior year, we, I would be in his office watching film, drawing stuff over on boards. Like, you can ask him. We was in there all the time just doing it a lot, probably more so than I should have in exact classes. But the thing was, it was just like, man, I got to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that right there alone can make a, a good fo- a good football player turn to a great one, you know? So I'm just sitting here like, I got my marker board right here with stuff written on it. But, like, in this all day, just drawing stuff over, like, man, what's got to do this and that and the third? And, that right there alone, I think, helped prepare me, you know, give me the foundation for what I needed it to, to get into the, to lead, into the league and catch on quick, you know what I mean? And even then, you know, it was still like, it's, it's a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, this, man, but then, like I said, once, once I got that foundation, I understood that the game was just deeper than running and hitting and going to the ball. It's, it's, what's, it's like a chess match. What's, what's, what's being played? What are, they, what are they showing? What's their style? You know, the film study. All that and uh, yeah, so I would say it definitely, it definitely uh, got that foundation going for me when I got to the league. Where do you feel like you stand right now? Uh, about a week into training camp, uh, as far as making the fifty-three man roster and and those sort of things. Well, right now I feel good. I feel confident about everything that I've been doing. Of course, you learn it. You know, you're not going to be perfect, and that's all right. Um, I just love the fact that I'm <laughs> down back balling. Uh, back playing, you know, safety, a position that I've been <laughs> – I played when I was in college, and I feel comfortable with that. And, you know, I'm back at it, you know what I'm saying, getting my stride back and, you know, making as many plays as I can, just having fun, trying to make an impact on special teams. That's the goal. So I feel like I stand pretty solid, you know. Other than that, you know, it's, it's a business, you know what I'm saying? So you got to put you got to put forth that product that they want to see. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, uh, you know, as long as I feel confident in what I'm doing, I'm fine. You know what I mean? I stand on my own. and. You know, my effort alone, give it a thousand percent every day. And I've been scratching the claws since day one. So I kind of know, you know, what goes and what, you know, what goes around, what goes around, where I need to be and what I need to do. So I feel pretty confident, man. So, you know, we end up. <laughs> That's right. End up. That's right. Yes, sir. Before we get into some of the weeds of uh, the specifics of how you got to where you got, I'm curious when, when the team goes out and gets a guy like, um, you know, Jamal Adams, you know, a, a big time mm. in your position, uh, what, is, what does that leave you to think? More competition? Yeah. Than pop? Well, you know what? I think the coolest thing is, is like not only is it competition, you get to see where you measure up, but 
you get to learn, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause there's always something you can learn. I never, ever, ever turn out knowledge. And I, one thing I love about him that like he, he has that personality, that passion. He loved the game. You can tell he loved the game. When he walked on the field, you can tell he is just itching to like, he loves it. You know what I'm saying? And just to see how smart he is and his experience. I mean, we, dog, I think we mainly the same age. He probably came out a year before me in college, but it's just like, it's just to see how much he's soaked up and how much he's learning his experience is something I just love to, you know, feed off of. You know, I watch him, ask him, I ask him questions, you know what I'm saying? His locker right next to mine, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it's cool to be able to have a guy like that. And I mean, when it comes to, you know, bringing guys in, that's never, like, you know what I mean? That's, that's nothing to do with me. I control what I can, you know, can control, you know what I mean? And I get in where I fit in. That's just the name of the game. And, you know, I'm very grateful that he's over here. Like I said, he's he's one of those. He's one of those guys. It's like, man, like you seen him top one hundred. Uh one of the most, most like more different players in the league. Like the way he like the speed, all that. So it's like it's kind of exciting to watch. You know what I mean? I'm just like, look at him. Like he, he you know what I mean? Like I love it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just cool to learn. I love it, man. I yeah. ain't got no problem. Yeah, that's uh that's one of a handful of guys that, that fans will turn on the T V on Sunday and and see a lot of that you're mm-hmm. spending a lot of time around. Uh, Russell mm-hmm. Wilson has, has been uh, known to reach out to guys that are younger, coming up in the league, uh, you know, maybe mentoring some rookies, even on the defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. What interactions have you had with number three? Well, well number three, I, man, in fact, I'll say this. I'll just give you a moment. This is probably one of the coolest things ever, and this is when I just got to Seattle, too. So, who we're playing? We're playing the Rams. I think this is the first time we were playing them. We had the little line green, that line green jersey zone. I was on the practice squad this time. So close game. It was going back and forth and back and forth. I mean, it was it was a game, man. And it came down. It's like a last minute opposite drive with a field goal. So one thing about number three is, man, I, I don't doubt that man at all. Like, you know what I mean? If it come down to overtime, we got to give him the ball. Like that's how I feel. Like give him the ball and let him do his thing. Cause you can just see when he's on, he's on, he's and he's always on. Like he's he's so locked in. You know what I mean? Like he's so in belief that it's just like man, you have to believe it. Like when he tell you, like even if we down to score, he's gonna look at you and say, "Give me the ball. We we gonna make this happen." Like don't worry, we not out. We not out. And so it was the last drive. They drive the ball down. We get up. We get in field goal range, and our kicker man he. Man, it was such a – it was a far field goal, too, I remember. And for some odd reason, I'm standing near Russell Wilson. He's usually down by the offensive side of the bench. I'm on the defensive side. But for some reason, I'm just over there and I'm watching this field goal. we sitting here. He's sitting on the bench. I'm standing on top of him and I'm looking. And he kicks it. The field goal is good. And then we just embrace. You know what I'm saying? We embrace and we celebrate. And I'm just like, man, this is a cool moment to be a part of. You know what I mean? It was just – I'm just like, dang, that was cool. You know what I mean? So, just he's a great dude, though, man. Like. Uh, you can go to him and ask him anything. He'll he'll give you any hints and tidbits, advice. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as me playing DB, the questions are like, you know, what what are y'all looking at? What do you look for? Like how are you? What is your process? And then on top of that, just his perseverance as a person, man. He's been through a lot as a person. He just continues to just wake up every day and get back to it with that positive energy. So man, it's 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 cool being alive from Russell Wilson. I definitely appreciate him as a quarterback. That's really cool. What about mm-hmm. uh, what about Coach Carroll? What about Pete Carroll? Have you had a moment with Chuck? Man, that dude is awesome. I I, I had nothing bad. <laughs> I love Coach Carroll, man. And I think almost every NFL player does. I mean, I think every NFL player wants to play for him. I mean, the juice that he brings, always at an all-time high, always keeping everybody on their toes, competition, just his belief. And I think that's where Russell gets something from, too, because his belief is just out of this world. And, He's all with the positive thinking and just all of that, man. He, he's with it, activated in the community as well. Like when everything was going on, uh, you know, a couple months back and even now, he 100% encouraged us to get involved. You know what I mean? Just he is a one of a kind human being. And I, I just, I'm so glad I get to be in the same building uh, with him too. You know, Hall of Fame coach in his own right one day. And, I mean, just the things he's been doing in this organization for the past 10 years is just second to none. You know what I mean? He's, he, he is a great dude. Man, I love him. He's awesome. You've got uh, a couple of guys that were in the room with you, the, the DB room with you when you were at SIU, now in the NFL. You know, <laughs> got to talk to Craig James a couple weeks ago. 
Jeremy Chin was just here. So you've got three NFL D- DBs. They're starting to call it DBU down here. Um, I mean, how, what was the dynamic between you and that defensive back group when, when you were here and, and how you guys pushed each other to be better? Man, <laughs> I, man that's a great question. Uh, man, that's a good question. I, don't, I think it was just – it was from from my first two years to my last two years. It was like it was two different teams, you know. It was two different coaching staffs, a lot of different people, you know. And I was one of the the few who started from the beginning and made it to the end and got to see this change. So, you know, us going through that change, I realized like the first half we had all. I mean, we had guys, we had talent. I mean, my freshman year, so I mean, it was there. But it just never added up. You know what I mean? Like, and that was just, you know, the dispute between coaches and coaches and players, player to coach, and just the whole thing. It just it wasn't there. And so when the coaching staff changed and Nick Hill took charge and got, you know, guys like Marty Rogers back in the building, you know, it was just like, man, you know what? There's something here. You know what I mean? And it, as a, as a, you know, older player, uh, you know, veteran player, so to speak, I just, I wanted them to know that we can, I mean, we can do whatever we want to do. We just got to decide to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's time for us to just really take take charge and take ownership of what we got in here, man. Like, I'm not letting nobody fall below that standard. And uh, it, it was a day-of-the-day thing. We had to make believe. It was a day-of-the-day thing. Shane came along, was just popping since his freshman year. The boy, and I showed him nothing but love. Just like, man, dude, no, nah, you're special. Like, I know it when I said you're special. Well, we got something special. Let's try to make this happen. And Craig coming in. We, we gelled together easily. Like, that was a no I mean, Craig was an awesome dude from day one. And talented, of course, works very hard. His story is even more I, – I admire his dog on story more than anybody's. I mean, it's just – man, I love it. I almost bring me to tears when I talk to him. We always talk to each other. But just having that, that, that flow in the room, man, was everything. We just had to – we had a belief. You know what I'm saying? And even the records – May not say nothing, but the record from last year shows what that where that foundation was. You know what I mean? It had to start from somewhere, and we all did it together, man. And it, it's it's so cool seeing more of us in the league now. It's like, dang, man! I just I remember we was you know in college, you know, just trying to get by. You know what I mean? Trying to get by, just trying to do what we can. And now we got a second round draft pick, and then we got somebody over there in Philly doing this thing. And I'm here, you know, scratching the car. And it's just it's beautiful, man. So. Yeah, we stay tight for sure, man. I love it. And all I hope for is just that the more DBs that come into that room and they see that, you know, they see that type of success, it's just, it motivates them. Like like I said with the LOB, it's just like you, it makes you proud. You know what I mean? You want you want to uphold that. You know what I mean? So that's all I ever care for, man. So, yeah, it's dope. I love it, man. Like, we play Philly. Running around with Craig on special teams is awesome. I loved it. I'm like, man, <laughs> it was just cool, man. It was fun, man. You go out of your way to make the hit? You go out of your way to make a hit on your old guy? Man, look. <laughs> Craig know what's up. <laughs> they, they know what's up, man. They know Ryan go compete. But, nah, man, we just – it was fun, man. It was everything. And, you know, just seeing each other on the field in NFL uniforms, it's, it's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? This, this is stuff we talked about, you know. So, it's dope. And when Chin came in, he was this, this young – talented guy at your position was there some competitive tension or, or jealousy at all at first man i'm never a jealous dude i'm one of the people that's is, i'm a look in the mirror you know what i'm saying i'm a guy if something if things don't go my way okay what could i have done you know what i mean but no when i seen him step on campus and you can ask him the first thing i said to him was like okay yeah you you different like that don't make no sense like he came in looking like a grown man i'm just like who is this kid? Like that don't like that just don't. Where are you from? Fishers, Indiana. I'm like, oh, you an Indiana boy too. That's you know what I mean. It's just like, and so, man, just watching him when he he, when he was just a freshman running around. I'm just like, man, he he just doing stuff and he don't even know what he's doing. He's just doing it. You know what I mean? And seeing him just pop out like that his freshman year, I was like, that's that's everything, dude. Like that was everything for me, and I never. Never one of the people that have no animosity. It's like, man, if you had to make us better, that's everything to me. You know what I'm saying? And then at that point, it's like, what can I do to help make us better? And we ended up coming to, you know, putting it together my senior year. And it was just, it was super cool, man. It was, oh, God, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun. But, you know, seeing, and you can ask, I mean, I talk to him all the time. I just got to talk to him like a day ago. But, man, just the whole time, like, man, 
it ain't gonna be me, but I know you're gonna be a draft pick. Like it's, it, I just know it. Like I know it. I told him that from day one. Just told him, hey, man, stay focused. It's gonna come to fruition. We had uh, had a couple training sessions together this off season. We was in Indianapolis. I was like, man, let's get it in. We got it in a couple times, and I'm happy to see him where he is, man. I don't do nothing with smiles on my face, and he wearing 21, which is my favorite number, which is the number I wore when I left. So I'm just like, you go, boy. You go ahead, <laughs> man. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, you you mentioned your Indiana upbringings. Um, Mm-hmm. Go all the way back to to early Ryan Neal. Who got you into the game, and, and what type of player were you early on? So, uh, you know, from 219 in the region, uh, started in Gary, Indiana, grew up in Merrittville. Uh, my family, mom and dad, sister, and my three brothers. So um, <clears throat> I would definitely have to say my dad first and foremost with the football thing because my dad, he was, a, he was a baller. He was a player. He uh, played high school football in Gary, graduated, played uh, community college, and then went to Weber State, had a shot at the league. He made it into a giant uh, training camp, but unfortunately his uh, playing days got cut short due to, you know, injury and the fact that, you know, he had some kids to take care of. So he came back and, and immediately started being a superhero dad. Um, but, you know, sports is always in our lives. Mike, my other brother, you know, as y'all know, is professional. He was a basketball player at first. He wanted to play basketball real, real bad. Like, he, he Kobe fanatic, all that. But he uh, fell into the game, and, you know, he, he started doing his thing. So I think it was from this point. So now I'm like, okay, here's my older brother. We were going to the college games and everything. But as a young boy, I always wanted to play. I was like, I want to play football. But I was always little, little when I was little. Like, I was, you know, super skinny bones. Like, my dad, like, no, nah, you can't. No, nah, not yet. You need to. But I used to always play with my, my next oldest brother, Matt, in the streets all the time with, like, kids, like, three, four, five years older than me. I never cared. Like, I just wanted to play. Like, I'm getting tossed around by technically teenagers and grown men. But I just love playing. So, you know, watch my brother Mike uh, go through his whole process in college and just kind of doing it for myself. I mean, it wasn't necessarily, like, I don't think the NFL became a dream for me, like, for me to go get up until, you know, like like I said, my brother Mike was in Purdue. My brother Matt went to Toledo in Idaho. So I was like, man, I at least want to get to college and play college ball, you know. So that was my first goal. But even before that, my brother got drafted in 20, um, no, 2009. Like, I remember that day like it was yesterday. You know, he was at home. I was on the couch next to him when the TV was on the drive and everything. He gets the car. It was, it was me, him, my sister, my dad. I think my little brother was downstairs, too, when he got the call. And so, man, it was just – it was so weird. You know what I mean? Like, that was like the first thing I – me and my brother outside, we going crazy. His neighbors outside clapping, and you see just, like, news people swerving down the street. Like, what in the – it was just so weird because I'm just – dang, like, he's, like, really in the NFL. Like, I play Madden. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I play those games. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, wow, that's kind of weird. Like, nice faces on the game. And then I think it was at that point for me, it was like, you know what? If he did it, I know I can do it. Like, you know what I mean? And, and that was that was it from there on. Like I said, that was in 2010. I was like, what, my freshman year in high school? It was like, it was at that point, I'm like, I'm about to do this. Like, I'm going to do it, and I don't really care what it takes to do it. So, coming out of high school, uh, you know, play defensive back. I just like hitting people and getting the ball. Didn't really care where it came from. I mean, the game was just, that was, you know, pure form of football fun, running around, hitting all that good stuff. And then, you know, came out. I didn't really have a lot of offers, man. I didn't. I didn't have a lot. But um, SIU gave me a call. That was, like, the first call. The first – I think that was the first time they talked to me. And it was like, you know, we want to bring you in, you know, for a business. We want to give, you know, give you an offer or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. So, went down, you know, went down to Carbondale and saw it. Got some Dale Leonard and them all there. And I was just like, this is it. You know what I mean? I'll come here and play ball. So, that's how it got me, you know, in college. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I ended up where I ended up, man. So, that's just kind of a little, little background about how I got into the game, you know. So there was – I mean, you weren't like a child prodigy or anything like that. It wasn't like at 12 years mm-hmm. old, people were standing there saying, all right, Ryan Neal's going to the NFL. Nah, I think, it, I think the thing was – I think it was the opposite because if you see like the rest of like my dad, my older brother, my other brothers, besides my youngest brother, they were like all big. You know what I mean? Like growing up all, you know, 280 pounds, 290, 300 D-line, and da-da-da. So that's kind of the stereotype when you see him. It's like, oh, that's a Neil, that's a Neil boy. He big, kind of big. But then you got me. It's like, okay, string bang. Uh, well, you know what I mean? Was he, 
you know, what's it going to be? And, I mean, I was good at football when I was, you know, playing Pop Warner. I mean, I was doing my thing. People you know I was good. But it wasn't like, man, this kid's the next, you know, the next big thing. It wasn't nothing like that. But, I mean, I just, like I said, I kept I kept working, man. I just, I believed it. You know what I mean? I, I was I believe I can do it. My brother did it. You know what I mean? And it's, it's kind of a messed up thing. You, you tend to get compared. I mean, you know, when you get families like that, you get compared. And, uh, you know, that's not fair. I mean, it's like, dude, I can't, you don't know what I would be just because of what he is. You know what I'm saying? You can't assume anything. But I, lo- I loved it because my, he set the standard. You know what I mean? Like, not even just as far as, like, you know, just as far as, like, how to, you know, kind of go after life. You know, my parents, the big foundation of it, just be the best, you, do the best you can at all times. Like, that's all that matters. And that's just all I ever chase. You know what I'm saying? Doing the best I could. And then it landed me here. You know what I mean? Kept going. Took, took, a, he took a wider route. Went, you know what I mean? Did different things and it still ended up here. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, it ain't about, you know, where you start at. It's just about how you go through that process and keep on grinding it out. You know what I mean? It, so, without that that natural talent – or not that you didn't have natural talent, but nobody mm-hmm. was saying, all right, it's obvious he's going to the NFL. What were some of the choices that you made that separated you from being just a four-year college guy and now a guy mm-hmm. that's stuck around in the NFL for a couple of years? Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, I think that's just – it's as simple as just, you know what I'm saying, you know, first of all, God, first and foremost. And second, just really just, like I said, believe in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I know I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not – and who's to tell me no? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen somebody with my own eyes who's related to me do this. Like, that to me, that I don't need nothing else. You know what I'm saying? And that's – that's something I'm always grateful for, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people don't, you know, they don't get that. Some people are the first in their family to do it. Some some people come from places where nobody has done it, but literally the guy that did it was sitting on the couch next to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, no, nah, I can do this. Like, I know I can do this. Like, it's, it's you know what I mean? And I never, I never stopped believing it. Like, of course, I mean, I did some things in high school. People were like, man, that dude, he can ball, he can play. I mean, you know, and there was a couple people like, man, he's definitely going to go to college. He's definitely going to go. But, I mean, was I out there, like, you know what I'm saying, like, number one recruit type? No, not a chance, not close. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just wasn't that. And uh, – but <laughs> at the end of the day, I never stopped believing it. Like, I never stopped believing it. I had a great support system. My fiance has been there since day one, high school sweetheart. Been supporting me since day one. Uh, she's just been watching me go through this journey. Mom, pop, you know what I'm saying? My brothers, my sister, they all, I mean, my cousins, they all know. They they all know we come from that same cloth. So they're just like, man, and now it's like, it's not as bigger than me now. Now it's two dudes from my, my city, too, Gary. Lonnie Johnson and John A. Johnson are both in the NFL. Lonnie played for the Texans second year. He's going to be, he's a starter. John A. is in, in Dallas right now. And it's like, We've been, you know, knowing each other since we was little. You know what I'm saying? Seeing each other come up, and it was just like, man, like, nah, we can do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Like, you just, you just got to just be, I'm with it. I'm focused. I'm going to go get it done because I know I can. So, that was, that's probably the only switch, man. Just keep working. Never stop working. 2010, I mean, I, I grew up in Chicago. I should be a Bears fan, but I was a Packers fan. So, 2010, your brother's a rookie playing for the Super Bowl for the Packers. I'm loving it. I'm sure you're loving it. Did you get to go? Did you get to go to the game? No, not that. My parents went because I remember because uh, that's when we had a really bad snowstorm in the Midwest. But no, nah, but it was it was still it was still the craziest thing ever. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My brother got drafted. My dad looked and said, "Man, wouldn't it be crazy if he went to a Super Bowl his first year?" And then he goes to a Super Bowl. Like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me the snowstorm stopped you from going to the Super Bowl when your brother? No, it didn't stop me. <laughs> that wasn't the main. That wasn't the main thing. The Super Bowl tickets. Woo! That that you talk about spending some money, but wow. But <laughs> no, nah, my mom and dad went. Man, my mom and dad went. But it was just, it, man. I I got to put. I mean, I seen the ring. Put the ring on. It, it's just. It was amazing. Like, that That was that. When he won the Super Bowl, we all won the Super Bowl, so to speak. Like, you know, my family won the Super Bowl. The hometown won the Super Bowl. It was just like, dude, like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? And for it to happen, you know, to him like that, it was it was the coolest thing to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's not just you won the Super Bowl. It's your family won the Super Bowl. Like, we are Super Bowl champs. You know what I mean? And it just – it just makes life so much cooler, man. And so when he did that, I mean, that that was another confirmation for me that I was like, okay, nah, 
come on. Like, I got to try that. I, I mean, why not? You know what I mean? So, and then it just it so happens that <laughs> um, last year, we had to go play Green Bay in the doggone uh, divisional playoff. And he was at that game. They ended up beating us. I'm like, dang, this is crazy. But <laughs> it's, it's so cool, man. It was it's, it's still one of the coolest things I've ever seen happen. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. awesome, man. That's awesome. But just yeah. to kind of summarize your story of getting to where you've gotten, uh, what are you most proud of that you've overcome? What are you most proud of overcoming to get to the point that you've gotten? I think that's a that's a cool question, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is any one thing because I've, I've been through so many up and so many downs, you know, so many closed doors. Um, you know, coming like from college, uh, you know, not ending up finishing my junior year as a starter. That was a wall. I had to go and overcome that. You know what I mean? Because like junior year is kind of an important year for a college football player. You know what I'm saying? Like. Especially, you know, playing FCS ball, you know, you're not getting those looks like an FBS player is. And uh, I felt like that was one of those things that it was a wall. But you know what? I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to conquer this. It's just another obstacle. We're going to get over it. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna to get back to work. I control. I can I can only control what I can control. You know what I mean? And ended up tying that down, finished my senior year the way I wanted to. It was, it was the perfect ending for me. And, you know, when you look at it, it's like, man, I never made an all-conference or not even an honorable man. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, so, you know, anybody looking at the situation probably be like, there's no, you know what I mean? There's no way. you FCS, you didn't do nothing of that. You know what I'm saying? Compared to my counterpart. But it's like, you know, anybody looking at that, like, man, there's no way. You know what I mean? They could have told Craig the same thing, too. But it was just something that I was like, nah, I can do it. Like, I know I can do it. I know I can play. It's just as simple as that. You know what I mean? So, had to do great at the pro day in Northwestern. That was another wall. Shattered that, and then that's when my phone started ringing. So I'm just like, okay, we're going in the right direction now, you know. Ended up going undrafted, which I was already, you know, if you say any interview, anytime a scout called me, the only thing I kept telling them was, I just, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I don't care about being drafted. I don't, I just, I don't even get, if you give me a tryout, you're not going to tell me no. Like, I'm just telling you, I want the chance. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, when they call you, they say, well, you know, this is where we got you on the board. I don't care about none of that. I just want an opportunity. That's it. If I get an opportunity, I'm cool. So going through that process, going to Philly, <laughs> oh, God. And, you know, I was excited. First day of rookie minicamp, boom. Grade two, hamstring strain, which is pretty much a – you are close to tearing it. So pretty much that's what happened. On the first day of rookie minicamp, you know, so I'm like, nah, I've been scratching and clawing all this time trying to get to this point just to have this happen. So I'm just like, and that hurt me a lot. It hurt me a lot mentally. You know, I'm away from my foundation, my home, my, my fiance, I'm away from all my people, kind of out there by myself. I'm just like, God, this is just, I can't believe this. Like, you know, I'm undrafted. There's only any day now, you know, and <clears throat> they tried to rehab me, get me back together. I ended up uh, coming back, not even like a fool. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even 100%. It's just, it was weird. But I ended up coming back for that first week of training camp. You know, competed my butt off, did what I had to do. And, I mean, you know, they let me go. It was a numbers game after that first week of training camp, which was right before the first preseason game. So I was back in Carbondale, actually, you know, back at my apartment with my fiance. I'm just sitting here like, man, I, I think I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? I'm an undrafted football player from SCF school. I was hurt. I had no game film, like nothing. You know what I mean? I got nothing. So I'm sitting at home for the week, and I'm just like, dang, this really might be it. Like, I done worked all my life for this, and, but, uh, you know, Atlanta really liked me coming out. They, you know, gave me a private workout at SIU. They were calling me. I probably should have went to Atlanta, which was stupid on my part, but whatever. So they gave me a workout, came back and did the workout. It was like, all right, cool. We're going we're gonna to bring you in for the preseason. You know what I'm saying? Get you a shot. I said, cool. Came in. <clears throat> uh, so I missed that first one. I didn't play my first preseason game. I didn't get to play. So I'm like, dang. So the second one, they both throw me at a corner. I'm like, oh, here we go. Another – Another wall, you know what I mean? It's just another wall. I'm like, all right, well, here we go. Uh, came to the second preseason game, didn't play until like the last minute of the game. It was probably a minute left in the fourth. Ended up making a play. They gave me uh, the second string safety job for the last two weeks of preseason. You know, did what I could, gave my best effort on special teams, and then that's they signed me to their practice squad, uh, which was huge for me. You know what I mean? Like, I remember uh, TD and, and Coach Quinn, 
You know, it was like, you know, a lot of guys usually don't like when we get, when we extend this to people, but, you know, we, we really like you, but then we got, we can do something with you, we want to bring you on the practice squad. I said, that sounds like music to my ears. I don't know what y'all talking about. Like, that's all I ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? Just the opportunity. So, long story short, you know, they brought me in. I was on the practice squad, you know, going hard, going, doing my thing. Uh, till about week, uh, I don't know what week, probably like week 11, 12, something like that. Got activated, which was everything. First game was in Green Bay Stadium, which was crazy. <laughs> But got to play that, finished the year out, and then, you know, came back around for the next year, preseason, I get moved back to corner. So I'm like, dang it. <laughs> so here we go, battling again, battling again. They ended up cutting me, they ended up letting me go. That kind of broke my heart. I said, dang, man. I, you know, I, man, I had a lot of high hopes and whatever. But, you know, day later, Seattle calls. Go over there. That's why I meet Pete Carroll for the first time. Walk in his office. He has music blasting so loud. I can't hear not anything. All I see is him mouth. Let me turn it down a little bit. And he literally takes it down and goes like that. And then continues to talk to me. I'm just like, I can't even. I, like, but that, that was the first time I met B. Carroll. I couldn't even hear him. But, you know, Kansas, Seattle, another, you know, got to move from another place. So I don't went from Philly to Atlanta to now Seattle. Been in all over the country. But, <laughs> and, uh, you know, come out here. Uh, you know, on that practice squad roster, duking it out again. Here we go, duking it out again. And man, being on the practice squad, I could write a book about that because that's a whole different experience. But you go through that, you working hard, and uh, they ended up activating me within three weeks left of the season, which was awesome. Did it again. Uh, played a lot of special teams reps, got to go on a playoff run, and you know, it just they signed me back on an extended deal, but uh, for, for the year. So, I mean, I'm just happy to be back, happy to be able to come back and compete again. And, you know, that's how I'm here now, man. Just going, like I said, a lot of obstacles. Um, and I'm proud of it all. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of the whole journey. I'm proud of everything, you know. Not one thing over another. I love the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, you know what? If you keep, you keep working, you stay, you stay headstrong, stay faithful, stay grounded. You, you, get what you, you get what you get when you get it. You know what I'm saying? And it'll end up coming back to you. So, that's how my journey's been. And, you know, I'm talking to a lot of guys, you know, keeping keeping the journey open with Craig. And when we played for you twice, kicked it with Craig twice, we talking it up. We always call each other, talking to Chan when he was going through the process in college. You know what I'm saying? Just letting him know what I've been going through and, and a whole lot of others. But it's been it's been an awesome journey, man. It's been awesome. I, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. I love it. What kind of music was Pete Carroll playing when he walked into his office? <laughs> Man, the guys with you, whatever radio station is called loud, it's just loud. It was loud. And I'm, I'm telling you, you talk about – he. I'm telling you, he is a ball of fire. Like, it's just – I love it, man. Like, he's one of the people – I'm like, I want to be like him. Like, that. I want to be like him. Like, he just has the right juice at all times. And you can tell with the whole organization, it's just it's juiced up at all times. We have fun. You know, we go to work and we have fun, man. That's, that's what B-Care is all about, so – yeah, it was cool. <laughs> There's probably just one volume for Seattle people because that stadium's so loud. He's he's probably got some things going on with his ears from how loud yeah, it is. Crap, yeah, probably, man, because I'm telling you, that stadium, yeah, it's loud. Like, it gets really, 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 really loud. Like, like I said, that Rams game, when they – that last one, I mean, whoo, you just like, dang. Like, it, it gets really loud in there. So, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Let me close with this, just thinking about what you've shared with us. You've, you've created this great life in football for yourself, despite mm -hmm. some of those walls that you're talking about. If you could give a message to a parent that's thinking about holding their kid out of football, relating it back to your journey, what would that be based on some of the experiences you've had? Well... You mean like holding out, you know, due to the like the, the situation that's going on right now with the whole world, like the coronavirus thing? Well, just like, you know, concussions have been a thing. And like, oh, uh, yeah. People are saying like numbers are down in football. But I mean, yeah. I, I see somebody like you that say, say your dad doesn't push you to get into football. You don't get to live the life that you've led. Mm, yeah. In some really cool spots. Well, what I like to tell those parents is that, and, th and I tell people all the time, because I actually try to put myself in their shoes, like, I don't necessarily would say pull your kid out of football. It's about when should when should they play. You know what I mean? Like, 
for me, I didn't start playing until I was 12 going on 13 years old. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of guys in this league been playing since they were five, six. You know what I mean? And knowing what we know now, would I let my five- or six-year-old put? No, I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Maybe flag in other sports, but that doesn't stop them from being able to develop those skills that they would need. You know what I mean? Like, I'll let them play a bunch of other sports, but until they're at an age where I know that they can at least, you know, like, they can at least take something. You know what I mean? Like, won't be as – bad, like the risks are not as bad, of course I would let them play. Like I would never stop a kid from, you know, you know playing the game. The game is it's been great for me. And not only has my journey been great, but I learned a lot of things from it. You know what I mean? A lot of things I can take in, in life, learning how to be a part of a team and learning how to gel with people from different parts of the country and the world and with different backgrounds and different views. And, you know what I'm saying? Just being able to work with those people for a common goal, understanding how, how a team works and just – the game itself, understanding how to be prepared, understanding how to be on time and having a schedule and, uh, you know, just doing all types of taking care of yourself, but the importance of, of well-being and dealing with your stresses and emotions. Like, it's so many things I can take away from this game. That it's taught me, like, how, of course, how to be tough. Like, things may not go your way, but you got to be tough about it. You may be super tired, but, hey, you got to wake up and come back. You may have had a bad practice yesterday. That'll make you a bad player. You just had a bad practice that day. You got to wake up and come back out of tomorrow. You know, so it's just like so, so many lessons, like, from the game that I learned that I feel like anybody can learn. And a lot of people do learn, you know, when they play the game. And so, you know, I'll tell them, like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're that worried about it, don't, 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 don't let them play when they're super little. Let them play flat. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to play the contact right now. You know what I mean? Not until you're comfortable doing it. You know what I'm saying? And, when it's time for them to get ready to go, let them let them fly, let them ride, and let them see what you know what they want. Because it, it was a point in time where I thought about not playing anymore. And I was in high school. I told him that I don't want. I don't want. I, I told him I, said, I don't want to play. This is too hard. Like I think this is too hard. But he was just like, look, I won't let you quit anything in the middle. So you got to finish. And I ended up finishing. And I was like, you know, nah, I can I can handle it. You know what I'm saying? So I would. I mean, let let them play, man. Let them go ahead and play. It's a beautiful game. Um, now, especially now, they're, t- they, they, they're coming up with way safe, way better, safer ways to play. You know, Seahawks are one of the people that, that really took that rugby style of tackling and introduced it in the game, teach us how to play as safe as we can. Like, you know, so there's, there's way with the science is getting ahead with the helmets and the designs and, you know, they, they really, you know, getting, getting held bent on some of these rules, but they, they're doing what they can, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, I wouldn't. I would never. Nah, let them play. You know what I'm saying? Let them play. But just letting them play. Super young, like five, six. I'm not with that. You know what I mean? Nah. But like when they 13, 14, yeah, let them go. Let them play. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. I feel like I better go let you enjoy your off day. I I could talk to you. I can talk to you the rest of the day, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can I can talk my butt off too. I tell you, I get that from my dad. But I hey. Appreciate you for bringing me on, man. Like I said, I love doing stuff like this, especially from places where I've been through and came from. So thanks thanks a lot for having me on here, man. It's been cool.